Hey, it's Dry Bear. And today we're going to talk about the Lies of P weapon system. We'll go through how the weapon system works with separating blade from hilt, how the boss weapons work, how the cranks work to update your weapons, and how they scale off the stats in the game. If you have any further questions or comments, you can drop by my live stream. I'm live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear. So one of the cool novel aspects of Lies of P is its weapon system. The fact that weapons for the most part can be separated into two different pieces. But this means that if you're used to other souls like games, you may not understand exactly how this weapon system works. When you get a weapon that isn't a boss weapon, it'll come separated like you see on screen. So it'll have a hilt and it'll have the top of the weapon and each of those signify different things. First of all, the hilt is in most cases what gives you your move set. So let's take a basic example like this dagger. When I have the Tyrant Murderer's dagger equipped, you can see that my light combo looks just like this. It is this four hit combo that goes over and over. And then when I use a heavy, it has this kind of stab with a multi-hit afterwards. But a little bit into the game, you will get the ability to start mix and matching your hilts and your blades. And you can do this either at Eugenie, which is your weapon smith inside of the main hub, or you can do it at any Stargazer or your bonfire as you walk around the world. Go to a Stargazer or Eugenie, go to Assemble Weapons, and you'll be able to click New Weapon Assemble. When you click this, you'll be able to select a head for your weapon, and then you'll be able to select a hilt for your weapon. So for example, we can take this big pipe wrench and we can put on the hilt of it, the dagger that we had just used as our new weapon. So now as ridiculous as it is, we have the same dagger that we had before, but now it has a giant strength weapon head on top of it. But you'll notice that even though it is a little bit slower, the moveset is still exactly the same. And that's because the moveset comes from the hilt itself. So I still have that four hit double stab combo at the end there. And then I still have the wind up for my heavy attack uh, that has the multi stab from that because we still have the same dagger hilt equipped. So that begs the question, what do I need the top of the weapon for if my weapon is essentially the moveset is coming from the hilt? And there's two main reasons that you would want to focus on the head separately. The first is the most obvious, which is going to be the weapon arts or the fable arts that come along with it. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see that the head itself gives me a specific weapon or fable art and the hilt itself gives me a separate one as well. So for this wrench head, we have this Monster Hunter style charge up attack that you can charge up and you can release and that comes with the head no matter what hilt is attached to it. That is the fable art that you have equipped with that head. And the hilt itself also has its own weapon art attached to it as well, which is this stab and retreat uh, animation that you can do with this. And so you can actually mix and match two different fable art attacks with the combination of head and hilt. Second reason is the damage output from itself. So when you go to upgrade weapon, you're actually going to be just going to be upgrading the head of the weapon. And this is where you get your traditional souls like plus one, plus two, plus three. And the head of the weapon is what determines your damage output as well as your damage type and so you can actually put elemental weapon heads on a non-elemental hilt that was originally a non-elemental weapon and make that move set elemental if you'd like it also means if you like using a certain type of weapon on the end or you want more reach for a weapon you can upgrade it very heavily to get it to a very high level of upgrade and then you can just attach it to whatever hilt you want but that weapon upgrade is going to stay on that weapon permanently which means that every time you loot a new weapon you're not just getting a brand new weapon you're getting a whole new combination options for the weapons that you already have in your repertoire you can pick a handle and you can pick a blade and you can put them together and make whatever weapon that you want which leads us into the next stage of crafting your favorite weapon in lies of p and that is going to be the scaling in the game itself now when you start the game it asks if you want to pick the motivity strategy the technique strategy or a more balanced focus and they have renamed all the stats in the game that you might no normally see in other souls like games so at first it's kind of confusing. So let me demystify it for you. Motivity is just strength. Technique is just dexterity. However, advance functions kind of like a new stat that you may not find elsewhere. The advanced stat functions as an elemental damage scaler. So any elemental damage you do with a weapon will do more damage the more advanced that you have. And yes, there are weapons that scale exceptionally well with high stat values of advance. So for example, this acidic crystal spear that I like using has an acid attack associated with it. And you can see that it scales with D for motivity or strength, D for technique or dexterity, and then A for advance because it is an elemental weapon. Same thing goes for this elemental fire dagger. And of course the chain lightning lightning buzzsaw that you get. And also this lightning electric coil stick as well. You can see they all have 
high scaling values for the advanced stats. And the other weapons function just like you'd expect from other games, the motivity being the strength stat, the big heavy weapons that are super slow, scale well with motivity, and then the fast pokey weapons that are more technique based, that are more dex based, all scale well with technique. But that begs a new question. If the scaling on the weapon matters, where does the scaling even come from when you're breaking them apart and sticking them back together? And the answer is the scaling comes from the hilt, the handle of the weapon itself, which we know already gives us our move set, but it also gives us our stat scaling. There's no base stats along with the hilt at all. It just tells you how it scales, what kind of weapon it is, and the move set that comes along with it, as well as the single fable art that comes with that hilt as well. The damage itself comes from the blade or the top of the weapon, as well as if there's any elemental damage, the guarding value, how much damage you chip off when you guard, how much you charge when you hit enemies by charging up your fable or charging up your heal cells, your pulse cells that heal you up, and the durability and the weight of the weapon as well. But what's even cooler is you can choose a hilt that you want and then alter a little bit the scaling values that are on it by going to Eugenie, going to alter handle. Selecting this option will bring up the menu of the weapons that you have available, and you can also just choose to scale up a stat that you already have on it. This will raise the rank of the stat you're trying to raise, and it will require a pretty rare resource, either an advanced crank, a technique crank, or a motivity crank, which scales the corresponding stat. Advanced sits on its own as an individual stat, which means you can raise this stat on any weapon easily by just doing the crank, and it won't affect anything else on the weapon. So you can see it on this acid spear that I have here that is a elemental acid weapon. When I use the advanced crank on it, I can raise the advanced stat scaling from A to S, which is super good. However, motivity and technique, strength and dexterity are tied together, which means that when you raise up your motivity, you will be lowering your technique by one. So if you have a weapon that is say uh, D motivity and B technique, when I raise the motivity up by one tier, it goes up to C, but simultaneously lowers the technique down by one as well. So if you want a balanced weapon, you can certainly do that. You can also find weapons that are kind of a little bit strength and a little bit dex, and then you can put it up into a more balanced combo here. So I can make this spear that's normally B technique and D motivity to all technique and nothing else. And then just scale one stat on it if I really wanted to. And if you want to reset a weapon, it costs another resource, a balance crank, which are pretty hard to find as well. And you can come down here and reset that and change the scaling back to its original state. Now this means that you'll be upgrading the head of the weapon using the resources you find out in the world. And this will have tiers of it, just like every other Souls game on the planet. You'll use a specific hidden moonstone for the first tier. Then you'll go into second moonstone, the third moonstone, and a fourth moonstone that gets rarer and rarer that you find later on in the game. And eventually you'll be getting, you'll be scaling up the damage that the top of that weapon does. And you're actually not going to be increasing the amount of value from your hilt. The hilt stays the same. You can change the scaling on it. You can swap it to new weapons, but it's just a moveset selector and a scaler. But I do recommend you mess around with creating new weapons because there's a lot of really fun combinations you can put together. Uh, we talked about even the goofy ones where you can put a big heavy weapon on a small hilt and get some damage off of that. But I think possibly one of the best uh, uses for this is maximizing elemental damage, which means you can get a moveset you really like that you really, really enjoy, and then put an elemental head on top of it, which means you still have the same move, it, move, move set for that weapon, but then you're starting to do elemental damage, which is exceptionally powerful in this game. Additionally, you can find a move set that suits you, a weapon that feels really good to use, that you like a lot, and then just hold on to that for the whole game and swap out different heads for different damage types or elemental uh, effects that may benefit you for the situation you're in and the enemies you're facing, but generally you can just get comfortable with a specific move type. Now there are boss weapons in this game and you will get boss souls or special rare ergos from bosses that you kill. And later on in the game, about a couple chapters in, you'll be able to turn those into a vendor, the hound that you find, and he will be able to give you a weapon for that boss. Uh, that is a specific type boss weapon. And what's cool about this is the specter that you summon for a boss fight will be carrying the boss weapon if that boss has a boss weapon. So you can preview what it's going to be before you actually get it. And what's cool about these boss weapons is they are very unique. They cannot be separated. They do not have hilt and handle. If you look in the bottom right corner of my screen for the site that I have, you can't separate it. There's no line in between. And so you have your own two special weapon arts that come along with it. 
that you can use with this weapon and only this weapon. And what's cool about it is it doesn't use any of the normal resources to upgrade that you'd normally use for other weapons. So we go here to good old Eugenie and we go to upgrade and we go to a boss weapon. You can see that it uses these dark moon moonstones in order to upgrade the weapon higher and higher, which means you don't have to worry about consuming your other moonstones for your normal weapons. And one thing that doesn't make as much sense that isn't clear, but actually does work is you can technically alter the handle of boss weapons as well. Since they don't really have a handle at first, I didn't think it was actually gonna work, but you absolutely can. You can come here, find a boss weapon and you can use your cranks on them as much as you want and scale up certain stats. I can take this etiquette umbrella boss weapon and take the technique or the dexterity up to S if I wanted, or I can raise the strength, or I can even add advance on it as well. It perfectly works fine. The only difference with the boss weapons really is that it requires a different upgrade material and you can't separate the hilt from the actual top of the weapon. And aside from the stats and the scaling and the damage output, I think you really also want to pay attention to the fable arts that come with the weapons as well. So some of these have really crazy options. There's parries that come with hilts. There's buffs that come with other weapons. Like for example, a lot of the elemental heads usually have a uh, ability that goes with them that adds more elemental damage. So this lightning coil here that I have, this head will always have this lightning bonus on it. So I can add this head to another weapon type for a different hilt and have extra lightning damage and add static shock to the enemies that I'm hitting as well, which gives you that blue number there, which is super cool. Some weapons like the exploding pickaxe, for example, have buffs on them that conserve energy, decrease stamina consumption temporarily. The pistol rock drill blade increases your crit hit chance as a buff. Salamander dagger blade adds fire attack and all of these buffs stack, by the way, you get stamina and crit at the same time. So keep in mind when it comes to elemental effects, usually they don't play nice together. So for example, if I have an acid tip spear and I try to use a consumable that applies fire to it, the game won't let you. And the same applies to these buffs that come along with them as well. Generally, it forces you to keep one element type if it's a fixed element, which is the benefit of having a pure element weapon. It always has it attached to it without using a consumable. But the benefit of having a non-elemental weapon is you can use either your grindstones to increase, you know, add element to it, or you can use your consumables that add that element on top of it as well, which gives you a nice benefit against enemies that are weak to a certain type of effect. The last thing I'll mention is the Legion arms have stat scaling on them as well. And so when you're kind of selecting your build, uh, and picking what you're going to use, then kind of pay attention to what Legion arm you're using as well. The ones that deal damage will scale off a specific stat, some better than others. The elemental ones scale off of advance and some of the fancy like the puppet string ones scale off of dexterity slash technique, that sort of thing. So when you're playing that out, you can certainly use it. And if you're in this video wondering if you can respect, you can, it only comes at the end of act seven though. So if you're not yet at the end of act seven, you won't be able to respect. So if you go to a stargazer and look at your waypoints, you'll see in the top left, the actual acts or chapters in the game and the, you won't get the uh, ability to respec your character until acts at the end of act seven. And once you get that, it's actually pretty cheap to do so. You can respec your, your Legion arm, you can respec your quartz character progression, and you can reset your level up stats as well. Uh, so don't worry about it once you get there, but if you're still wondering, it's probably better to stick with whatever you have and then when you get to that point, you can reset your character. Now, I'll wrap it up there and keep the video as short as possible. Hopefully, this helps you understand the weapon system in Lies of P. This game totally came out of nowhere for me. I thought it was going to be just another clone, but it's actually very, very good. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you found value in the video, leave a like down below. Leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And I'll see you on my live stream. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.